All right, perfect. Okay, well, Mary is from Casting for Recovery, and so I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to her and just want to make sure everybody can see the slides real quick. All right, okay, you're good to go. Okay, um, I'm Mary Turney. I'm one of the co-program coordinators for Casting for Recovery in Wyoming. I'm going to give you just a quick overview of what it is that we do, and um, I will tell you up front what, what, um, how can we use your help it is that um, our retreat is in August, but the deadline for applying is June 1. And so the way we can most use your help is just with outreach with applicants. So if we go to the next slide, this is a brief overview of what Casting for Recovery is. Um, we provide a two and a half day retreat that provides an introduction to fly fishing to promote um, healing for breast cancer survivors. Um, casting, you know, a lot of people will say, why fly fishing <laughs> and breast cancer? And the reason is that there was a breast cancer reconstructive surgeon in Vermont in 1996, and she was fly fishing and realized that the action of casting was very similar to exercises that she gave her patients to rebuild muscle strength after surgery. So she partnered with a professional angler who had a great connection to Orvis as well as Trout Unlimited. And that's how the program began in 1996. Um, over 11,000 women have attended Casting for Recovery um, throughout the United States, as well as in Europe, Australia, and New Zealand. One thing I like to say is in 2020, like so many other places, we did not have any of our retreats due to COVID. But in New Zealand, because they had such a strong lockdown policy, they actually did have um, retreats during uh, 2020. So um, good for them. Okay, next slide. So this is the overview of Wyoming. We started the program in Wyoming in 2011. And since then we have served 158 Wyoming women. Um, our retreat this year will be August 11th to 13th. And the deadline to apply is June 1st. Um, online applications are the best and it's www.castingforrecovery.org. Um, we did send out recently the retreat notice, STAR sent it out, but if you need that again, we can get it to you. Um, we use a random selection process. So whether a person applied last November or they apply on May 30th, they have the same uh, chance of getting in. It really is almost just like picking names from a hat. It is done by the national staff of Casting for Recovery to ensure that we don't have any local bias in the selection. Mm -hmm. Uh, the retreat's offered at no cost, and we serve 16 women. We've had great distribution across the state um, since we started. There's two counties that we have not had anyone from. One of them is Hot Springs, and I honestly can't remember what the other one is. Um, we use the term any age, any stage, as far as the women that we serve. Um, and I'll stop right there and say, yes, we only serve women. Um, I'll talk to that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, we will have men ask us about attending our retreats. Uh, we encourage them to apply for a similar program called Real Recovery, which some of you are probably familiar with. Um, any age, any stage, the youngest woman we've ever had in Wyoming was 29 and the oldest was 82. Um, nationally, the youngest was 19 and the oldest was 93. Um, we have women attend the retreats who are 20 plus years out, as well as women who are currently in treatment. And that's an important balance in the program because those women who are further out really do help provide hope to the women who are currently in the midst of treatment. Only 17 participants of that 158 that I mentioned had ever attended a support group before coming to Casting for Recovery. And we are not a support group, but we do provide support. I hope I said that kind of correctly, Pat. 100% um, of our past participants have said in their surveys, which are anonymous, that they would recommend um, CFR to other people. And in fact, they are probably our best ambassadors for outreach. Okay, next. Um, the retreat schedule, I'm just gonna take you through it real fast. On the first day, the women arrive, um, usually rather hesitant 
um, not sure what it's going to be like, or if they certainly not sure they ever want to talk about cancer. Um, we first thing we do is we gear them up and get them in their waders and boots just to see get the right fit, which we make it fun doing that. And then we talk about entomology, bugs, and we manage to make that fun. And uh, an overview of equipment, and then a reception, dinner, and a lovely evening by a campfire with some guitar music. Day two is a really full, action-packed day. Um, we teach the women how to cast. We teach them how to tie knots. And amazingly, we actually make that fun. Um, we're real attentive to the fact that some women will have neuropathy in their hands. So we help them with using larger, um, tw um, instead of a little tiny fly line, we help them with larger pieces of like a fly line. Um, we teach them catch and release, which is a, a real firm policy in our program. And then we get to go and catch fish at a neighboring ranch. At that same ranch, um, we have a discussion, um, medical discussion about advances in treatment um, sometimes we talk about lymphedema therapy, um, body image concerns. It's really open to the women to discuss what they want with our medical facilitators. Um, then we fish, and then after that, we have some free time, which is also very important because the women interact at that time. They sometimes go for walks. They sometimes need a rest. Um, and most of all, they enjoy the beautiful setting where we uh, are able to have our retreats. Um, in the evenings, um, big shout out here to Caitlin, who I, I don't know if she's on today, but Pat is. And um, both Pat and Caitlin have been psychosocial facilitators with us at our program. Uh, they do several uh, things during the weekend, but on Saturday evening, we have something called Evening Circle, where we discuss the emotional impacts of a breast cancer diagnosis. Um, and then on Sunday morning, and they're usually very tired by Saturday night. We have a campfire, but they usually just go straight to bed. Um, on Sunday, we have a non-denominational gathering, um, which is very moving. And then um, we do catch and release fishing with the, each woman has her own personal guide. Um, some women, if they have mobility um, concerns, we may have two guides with them. So we have lots of volunteers. We go back to the ranch and we have a wonderful picnic and a great celebration and then they go home. All right, um, next slide. This is the Absaroka Ranch where we host our retreats. It's just a beautiful setting. Um, it's one of the reasons why, like the cabin that you see, there's two women on each side of that cabin and they share a bathroom. That's one of the reasons why we limit it uh, to women only. Um, we're not gonna have um, we don't have any extra cabins to use, so we have two women on each side. Okay, next. And we don't allow horseback riding. Um, this is the, just the fitting for the boots and waders. Like I said, we actually make this kind of fun and lots of laughter as they're trying to get suited up. All right, next. Knot tying basics. One of the things I love about the knot tying is that the women, you really see them start to help each other. And so if someone's having a problem, they're leaning over and they're assisting and it's just uh, beautiful to watch. Next, uh, casting lessons. We have this beautiful lawn where everyone can spread out and cast and get um, attention. As you see, like in the upper left-hand corner, Patty's helping the woman learn. Um, that's me on that upper right, helping a woman who it's better for her to learn to cast in a chair. And so we do accommodate women to um, learn in their own and whatever's going to work best for them. Okay, next. This is just where we do our medical discussion. I just kind of want to give you the feel for, it's a, it's a pretty intimate setting in the Cottonwoods. I don't have any pictures of the session that like Pat Ingler Parish, Caitlin um, lead. And the reason is that's um, even, um, what I would call more intimate because they are talking about emotional aspects and we don't have any cameras when we're, when they're in that and we limit the attendance just to the women and then the psychosocial facilitators. The next one just gives you an idea of what free time looks like. 
We've had women bring mountain bikes. We've had women lay in the hammocks. Most of all, they just have a time for them, which is important. Okay, next we go fishing. And we are very fortunate to have two low, two places where we are able to go and pretty much assure that every woman will catch a fish on Saturday and on Sunday. We tell them that the size of those fish is not normal and they should not expect that when they get home. Okay, next. This gives you an idea of the volunteers with the program. Um, again, we have quite a few people who join us on Sunday. Our retreat staff is all women on Friday and Saturday, but on Sunday we do have men join us to help with being that one-on-one -on -one guide. All right, next. This is a photo of retreat staff one year. Um, it's kind of an older picture. Some of you may recognize Andy Berry over there on the left hand, third in from the left. Andy helped us start the program and also helped recruit Pat to join our staff. Um, but this is an older picture, but the what's below is still true. The staff, um, it's all volunteer. Uh, we have an oncology nurse. We have a rural healthcare nurse. Um, we have two psychosocial facilitators. We have professional fly fishing guides as our instructors. And we have eight past participants who serve on the staff, which is also a testament to the program. I'm just about done. Next slide. These are some of the quotes from the Wyoming retreat participants. I especially like the two on the left, the one that says, cancer made me feel so helpless. It was overwhelming. This weekend has given me hope. Um, and, the, and the next one below that, I'm going home with my soul having been cleansed and joy return. And my favorite ever is the one on the bottom right, I feel whole again. And this quote is actually from a woman who is in the medical profession. She's a nurse and she is on our staff now. And um, she knows I share this almost every time I talk about casting for recovery. Uh, I think it just really um, speaks to the impact the program can have, even though it's short. Okay, so the next slide's the last one. And just um, wanted to say again, any help you can give us in getting applicants, um, we appreciate. Um, we always have enough women who do apply uh, that we will have alternates. And, um, but we want to make sure that we do have enough women apply. So that's it. I'm now open to any Q and A that you may have. Uh, do you uh, have more volunteers? Um, not so much. Um, and thank you for asking. Um, we, we are, I will say this right now, we are staffed well in our psychosocial group. We have three, Pat is one, and then we have Caitlin Webb and Jamie Bedard. Bedard. Um, in the medical, we have an oncology nurse and we have the rural healthcare nurse, but the oncology nurse it will not be able to be our nurse next year. And so next year we are going to need an oncology nurse in 2024. We've had a couple of recommendations of people. We have not started uh, recruiting yet for that, but that has always been a difficult position to fill. We have actually had to bring people in from out of state. Um, you know, it's a commitment to have to be there. Um, we arrive on Thursday to get ready and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that's a lot to ask people to be gone from home and families. Um, as far as the fly fishing right now, we are good with that. I anticipate in the future, we're gonna be looking for another woman fly fishing guide um, to help with as the instructor. Um, and on Sunday, because we do like to have two, we really like to have a two to one ratio for our women where we fish, they're pretty steep banks and so we don't want to have anybody fall into the pond. And so we like to have two people. And so we always are looking for new people to help as um, fly fishing guides. Okay. 
any other questions? Dar, this is Pat. I just want to say Mary has been an outstanding leader and an amazing uh, promoter of helping women and men with cancer in Wyoming. She's just, um, she's a connector and an enthusiast and she's got a team of people working for her because she is a hard worker and a great leader. And we would be, we are just very, very fortunate to have her lead this program. So just wanted to give you kudos, Mary. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's something that I am not a breast cancer survivor. I am an avid angler. And um, when I retired, I wanted to find some way to work with women. And this fulfills that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like someone's asking for your contact information. So definitely feel free to drop that in the chat box. And if there are no other questions, I will go ahead and stop this recording and then start another one for Dawn. So give me just a second here.